Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything, I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the NFL Big Game Previews for week number 14. We got a lot to discuss here. If you would, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you enter the football picks contest. Of course, it's right up there at the top in the navigation bar. Click on football picks contest, and you put in your name, you put in your email, you can win a cool prize from Tunica, Mississippi. They bring you the show each week. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books along with some cool steakhouses, golf courses, fun shows, concerts, and comedians, and everything else is coming through there. It's, it's Christmas time. It's somewhere that you want to spend some time, I guarantee it. And the sports books are really, really freaking awesome. So we're getting into bowl season. We're getting into conference championship season. We're getting into really fun division races in the NFL. Good stuff to go check out. You can find more information on everything they're doing at tunicatravel.com. We got another sponsor. Smackapparel.com is the website. Use promo code WIN, W-I-N, to get a 20% discount on whatever you want to order. It doesn't matter how much stuff you put in your cart. You use that promo code WIN, they're going to give you 20% off of it. And if you order over $40 worth, they're going to ship it to you for free. Not too shabby. They got all your favorite teams, pro and college, fun rivalry shirts, just good-looking stuff, man. They got all the all the right logos, all that good stuff. Smackapparel.com is the place to go. Use promo code WIN, W-I-N, for a 20% discount. Let's go ahead and jump into this. We don't want to take up too much of your time. Game number one here, 49ers at the Saints. It's a 12 p.m. game, Central Time, God's Time Zone, on Fox. It's at the Superdome in New Orleans. Saints are a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Total is 44. 49ers have lost two out of three. What what do we do here? Man, I I like the Niners. I do. I think I kind of like them coming off a loss. It's not like they got beat bad. They played a really, really good Baltimore team at home. Yeah. And and I think they played them to a draw. Baltimore's got a hell of a kicker. Yeah, they definitely I, do. I mean, I think there are less than fifty percent of the kickers in the country come out and drill that kick to win the field, uh, to win the to win the game. You're probably right. So if the kick gets missed, basically it's a turnover and they're then, going into overtime. And it's anybody's it's anybody's game. Yeah. So um, you know, I, I like them to have a little bit about of a bounce back. I think this game matters to both them and and uh, the Saints, it matters a little more to them because, yes, it matters in the ranking of who will have home field advantage throughout. But they keep losing games, and Seattle keeps winning games. Seattle right now has the current tiebreaker over them. And, and I, you know, they, they go from the number one seed or maybe number two seed to, to number five seed. Yeah. Real That's fast. That's not good. Real fast. Do so you like the 49ers straight up? Right? I do like the 49ers straight up. I'm going to go opposite. Okay. I mean, picking against the Saints. Saints in the Dome is not smart. That's that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, it's it's just not. No, it's. I understand that Drew has not looked all that great. Drew Brees, obviously, Father Time is undefeated. But at this Saints defense, like at these two teams, the two coaching staffs will know each other really well. Um, I do like the 49ers. I think but, it'll be a great game. This is two weeks in a row that the Niners don't get to be on national TV. So this is three out of four really tough games. True. And and then they, they also had the Cardinals in there, and the Cardinals have been playing pretty tough. I mean, not not great, but, you know, this is a, kind of a gauntlet for the 49ers. Oh, no. We're getting into the hard part of this game. And, and the Saints played on Thursday. Last week they got a little extra no, the time. The Saints have the extra time. You're right. I mean, a, a lot of things point to that. You know, and the public is still all over the Niners. Yeah, I mean, it scares me. It's it's bananas. I just I, I don't get it. I don't. Get, I thought it'd be a little more evenly split. I think they need this game more, and I think that's the only reason I'm going that way. I think they both kind of need it evenly, don't they? No. I mean, no. obviously the Saints can the be Saints like the one or the two seed. Division, they could still be the two seed no matter what happens. I think I think the because Saints, the only other team involved in the conversation for the two seed is Seattle. Yeah, it's not Green Bay, and so therefore, um. If the Saints lost it, they would still be the two seed. 
I think the Saints want home field for the whole playoffs. You're right. Oh, no. I, yeah. I think you after, want after the way last year happened. They want, they want people coming through that dome. You got that right. You're right. You got that right. All right, next game up here. The Ravens at the Bills. It's New Era Field in Buffalo, 12 p.m. on CBS. 43 and a half is the total. The Bills are a six-point underdog at home. The Ravens have been through a gauntlet. Now, they've won, what, seven straight? Is that right? Yeah, that And that's the gauntlet. It, but that, that's definitely a gauntlet, but they have played some tough teams. That's they had to I'm go saying. to L.A. They come back. They got to play the Niners. They played the Patriots. They played uh, uh, the Texans. They, I mean, played they they've been rolling everybody. They've, I mean, they've played... They played everybody good. Yeah, the Seahawks in there. Yeah, yeah. that's. It. I mean, that's. It's tough to do that. The Bills, of course, had a little extra time. And the Bills are on one Thursday. team that nobody really thinks about as being good. I keep saying it every year. I've said it all year long. This they are is well a coached. Good team. Yes, they're a good. I bet the over on them. I bet them to make the playoffs before the season started. I feel smart on both of those right now. I don't think I'm losing either of those games. Um, oh, the over I've already hit. I think it was only like seven wins. Got that in the yeah. bag. Um, they're uh, they're sitting at nine and three. I mean, they, yeah. they control their destiny. Yeah, like they they could win the East. Yeah, they have a chance to win the East. That's crazy, Oof. but I think they can win this game. I don't know that they win it. I think they can. This is the NFL. People are good and people get got all yeah. the time. Uh, this seems like one where the Ravens could ease up. I'm I'm taking the Bills. Yeah, I'd take the uh, Bills here too. We gotta I'm make gonna a take pick. them. Yeah, I'm gonna take them straight up. Like I, you're you're doing straight up as well. You're debating it, aren't you? Yeah, I kind of think I am. Yeah, I'll go straight up with you. Okay, that's uh... <laughs> I will. No, I'm, I'm I'm because this is what happens in the NFL. No, hey, nobody still respects Buffalo. Yeah, because we remember all the jokes that we've made all those years, and and it's just okay. It's been one after another. It's a different team. It's it definitely a different team. Sean McDermott is a hell of a football coach. If you hadn't figured it out by now, I can't help you. I just can't. Just keep betting against them. I'll take them, and, and I'll cash tickets. There you go. Next game up, Sunday Night Football. Seahawks at the Rams. It's a division game. The Rams are pretty much out of this playoff thing. But don't tell them that. Because, they. I mean, they're sitting at 7-5. and five. The Vikings are currently 8-4. and four. And they're only one game out of the wild card. Right. So, I mean, we'll see. But obviously, they play in a super tough division. Um, but they got a lot of their tough games out of the way. They hung with this Seattle team in Seattle and had a chance to win it. And Greg Zerline missed a kick at the end of the game. That was the only difference between the teams. Now, the Rams have not looked good since then. I was just about to say, I just don't think either of these teams are the same team when that happened. No. I will say this, though. The Seahawks, at some point, all of that good luck is going to swing back the other direction. Uh, that's fine. Because I'll they, ride they, it. I'll, you ride it to see Bucks here. You don't ride at all. They have won nine one-possession games this year. That's right. They can win ten here. That's crazy. I mean, they're, they're what, ten and two? Is that right? They're ten and two. Ten and two, and nine of the wins were by one possession. That is bonkers. That's fine. That's, so, rust, that's hustle and bustle, baby. They they do win a lot away from home, though. They're they're almost better away from home, which is nuts. Well, when you're ten and two, you win a lot everywhere. It don't but really, true, it don't really matter. That is true. L.A. is not like a tough place to play. There's not no. going to be a million Rams fans out there just getting wild with it. Okay. No, it, it's it's by the way, it's Sunday night football. Total is forty eight and a half at seven twenty p.m. on NBC. L.A. Memorial Coliseum ain't exactly. Uh, it ain't the dog pound. No. It it's, not, it's not a den of thieves here, okay? This no. is nothing nothing to be afraid of. No, you got that right. Uh, so we're going opposites here, right? I'm, I'm taking the Rams. You're taking Seahawks. I'm taking Seattle. That sounds I'm not like a plan to me. Russell Wilson right now. I can you, understand. You listen, I almost took Arizona last week. I lost. But getting right against Arizona doesn't make me feel better about your football team. I can understand it. They've looked bad when they've played decent competition. Not good competition. Decent competition. That's true. That's true. Next game up, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough to play the New England Patriots. Patriots are a three-point favorite. Total is 48 and a half. You were right, by the way. I told you Pat Mahomes would never have a total under 50. I was wrong. You called it. Uh, it's at 325 p.m. on CBS. 
first off, I think it goes over the 48 and a half. Because I think these two teams will score because the Chiefs defense ain't great. And I think Mahomes will be able to score on the Patriots. It may not be a ton, but last year they met up twice. He put 37 and 40 on them. So His I don't know that he puts up this much. Different the defense last year. But but 28-24 gets you 52 points. So His defense you know, this year ain't the same as the defense last year. For the well for the Patriots. It, I, I'm with you, but I did just the watch Pats the Texans aren't... put 28 up on it. And I understand that they were sick and all that. I, I get you. But I'm just saying. You keep buying that. That's fine. Put your faith in that. I think it would be. That over. Go ahead. It would be miraculous if they held the Chiefs under 20 points. All right. Well, okay. Under 20 is different than under 24 or 28 because 20 doesn't get you a cover. I mean, if it's 30 to 20, yeah, it does. But eh, I don't know. It, it, what would twenty eight twenty one gets me a cover? Patriots. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just saying I would go over, but that's not what we're picking here. Obviously, uh, the Pats don't lose at Gillette, don't and it's only a Gillette. three point line. Like they, at, they hadn't covered in three weeks. At, I don't, at some point in time, they will get back to the offense. Got going last week. It took them a quarter and a half, but they got going. Yeah, they still don't have any players. <laughs> I mean, it's still a bunch of nobodies. But they got they got it going. Yeah. At some point in time, these rookies are going to start making plays. I believe that. I really believe that. And and they're going to be able to run the football. That's where that's where your under has a pro, your over has a problem is if the Patriots run the football on them and just pound it down. The just throat, keep the ball for forty five minutes. Yeah, that because you know that's what Bill wants to do. By the yeah. way, he don't want Patrick Mahomes touching the field. Yeah. No, you're right. He wants to keep his ass on the sidelines. No, you're you're one hundred percent right. I'd take the Pats. I'd take the under. I'll uh, I'll take the Pats as well, but I'm gonna go over. That's it. We don't Look. normally pick over runners, but I did it just to spite you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next game up before we get to the rapid fire section. Thursday night football: the Cowboys and the Bears. Woo! What is it? What's that line? Three. <laughs> it's three. The over under on the, the number of games these two teams are gonna win together. Yeah, no, that's the season. Good gracious! Is it three. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Cowboys minus three here. On the road, uh, and yeah, the number of wins that they will have the rest of the season, we'll put the over under at four. Together, together. Assuming one of them has to win this game and they won't tie. Yeah, no. Right. So, so we got one. After this game is three more. <laughs> God, these two teams. Both of them should have been way better. It's uh, it's and, and the Cowboys. The Cowboys might win this division. They might run away with this division. Yeah, no, right. Uh. It, 7.20 p.m. on Fox. It's on Thursday night, like I said. It's uh, Total is 43. It's at Soldier Field in Chicago. It's going to be cold. It's going to be awesome Big Ten football weather, of course. Correct. The Bears have not looked good on offense. They hadn't exactly looked great on defense. I think that's because they're having to play a lot of defense, though. Yeah. I mean, we, I we see that all the time, right? I mean, if your defense is on the field constantly, at some point in time, they're just going to give up big plays. Yeah. Um. I'm going to roll Cowboys here. I think they need it more. Uh, I don't think they're very good, but I don't think that the Bears are very good either. And I, I don't think the Bears are going to be able to score enough because I do still have a little bit of faith in this Cowboys defense. And it don't take a lot of defense to be able to shut down this Bears offense. I, I don't even know. I don't even want to pick this game. It makes me sick to my stomach. Even. <laughs> <sighs> Every time I believe in the Cowboys, they just – they they make you look bad. They just do stupid stuff. Here's the thing. I I think I think Dak is a good quarterback. I think Zeke is still a freak. I think Gallup is a really really good receiver coming on. They still got Cooper. How the hell they don't win this game is beyond me. I got to go with Dallas, but yeah. I don't feel good about it at all. No, because they like they they lose to good football teams, but I don't know that Chicago is a good football team. And they lose to bad football teams too. And they've done that. They've done that as well. Yeah, I don't know, man. This, this team makes no sense to me. No, I, I think this is this me is neither. finally the year that Jason Garrett is going to lose his job. Like we've been talking about it for five years now, maybe longer. Yeah. And every year it's how does he still have a job? Now, I mean, they made it to the playoffs last year. They you know they got. To the game in uh in Los Angeles, but 
Yeah, I mean, I, it, if you got a choice between Dak and Mitch Trubisky, I mean, you're going Dak every time, right? I think so. It's not that he hadn't looked terrible. Like, he's actually looked pretty good in most spots. So I'm going back and I'm looking through Cowboys losses recently. And you know what? They haven't lost to a bad team. It, not not since the Jets game. Yes. That, man, that was, man, God, that was a long time ago. Um, week eight, maybe? Uh, you got me. Hang on, I'm trying to find it. I'm going slow. I can't read and it's too late. Nope, it wasn't week eight. Week seven? Maybe not? Nope. Cowboys, Eagles. Holy shit, dude. That was a long time ago. Two months ago. Yeah, it there was. It, it was. It was week six. And we are in week 14. Yeah. I mean, that was a long time ago. Now, That's they the have last lost time. games. They've lost games, but they lost to the Vikings, who we think are going to make the playoffs. They By lost four. to the Bills, who we think are going to make the playoffs. Yeah. They've, like, they've they lost, lost to the Patriots. good teams. They lost to the Patriots, who are making the playoffs. They're they're beat that they beat the Lions in that time pan. They beat like they beat the Eagles, who are a shit team right now. So like forget right now. This year, they're bad. I just This is one of those to, games that they the don't lose to play. bad teams. The problem is is we don't know if the Bears are a bad team or not. We know they're not a good team. Yeah. We know that, right? Yeah. We, we know, know that no, not a good team. Not this year. Give me the Cowboys. I got to do it. I got to yeah, do it. I'm it's the, the only same. right play I got. Cowboys minus three for both of us on that one. Let's of go. I'm in... taking all dogs and every other pick. Why the hell not? <laughs> I got the Patriots. That's the home, <laughs> it's the only home team I got. Let's uh, let's jump into the rapid fire very quickly. Uh, there's some there's some bad games here. Yeah, we're going to get some bad games. But some of these, the reason they're listed is because they're so bad they're Kind of interesting. interesting. Yeah. We got uh, a loser leaves town match. I think we've got a couple of those. Chargers at the Jaguars. This is it. That's a loser leave town match. I don't think the coach survives this game that loses this game. I think you're probably right. And if they tie, they both get fired. That'd be funny. And you know, it, it may not matter who wins. I think at the end of the season, they may both be gone. You're right. At the end of the season, I think when, I mean, I think this is a literal loser leaves town. So if the Chargers lose at the Jags, I don't think Anthony Lynn makes the plane ride to L.A. The it, I will say this: it's going to be interesting to watch Gardner Minshew back in that starting role. I mean, they they bench Nick Foles. Nick Foles got Foles. It's kind of funny. I know our guy T.J. thinks they're going to blow the whole thing up. Um, I and they might think it was Jason Lockenfora on the Tony Kornheiser show. It it might not have been him, and it could have been a completely different NFL podcast. I listen to a lot of podcasts throughout the days. Um, that said, Tom Coughlin wants to fire Marone and just coach this team. He wants to coach? Yes, he knows he's a better coach than Marone. Yes, he absolutely wants to coach this team. And I wonder, is it easier to just fire Marone and bring Coughlin down? Maybe. I don't know. I thought this might be a good spot for Ron Rivera, but, I mean, we'll see. I well, know. I mean, if everybody gets fired, then it, it, you know, the Coughlin's gone too. But I don't, I doubt they'd get rid of Coughlin. I mean, I, maybe I, they clean house, a clean house. Yeah, they clean house, they clean house. Uh, I want to know who the hell gave Foles thirty million dollars or fifty million dollars in two years. Like I, you know, I mean that did. You got me. If that was Tom, yeah, it I might mean, be time. I think to you go. got to pack your stuff too. Of course, that also means he's the one that drafted Gardner Minshew. So. <laughs> You know, when you not, draft a guy in the fifth or sixth round, you don't really get credit for finding a diamond in a rough. I think he just got lucky. That, that, yeah, a, a lot of guys sling a lot of noodles at the wall, hoping one sticks. That's true. That's true. Uh, next game up: Colts at the Bucks. Bucks are a three-point favor here. I think this is going to be a really fun game. Uh, Jameis has won two straight, and Bruce Arians is a hell of a co like. This will be a fun coaching matchup for sure. Frank Reich against uh, Bruce Arians. I have a new rule. Any Jameis Winston game, any Bucks game is in at least the interesting games if it doesn't make the big game. Yeah. Because if you're not watching these games, then they're, they're really exciting football. Yeah. No, they're yeah, fun. Nothing's boring. Not in the slightest. Cousin Sal has bet on Jameis every week to throw a pick. And he's talk like I follow him on Twitter. 
and he talks about how it's just free money. It's like minus like three twenty, minus three eighty. Will he throw a pick this week? I and mean, it's you're, terrible you're lay, odds. You're laying a bunch of odds. It's free money though. It's free money. I mean, he's yeah. It's every week. Every week's gonna get one. Yeah. He said that the odds change if it's. Um, will he throw one and a half picks? Will he throw two? It goes from minus like three eighty to like plus one eighty. It's like massive swing, but that takes nuts. He's gonna throw one a game. He won't always throw two. That's true. That is true. This is this could be interesting. I think this is a two two pick game. You might be right. See, he's he's got guys all around the country. He can find these prop bets. We don't have that luxury here. No, it's it's a, you, you can't always get, get those. About. Can't always get those at, at Tunica, and they they don't really offer them a bunch on online. On no, I, look, dude, I, I got a lot of offshore accounts. I can't find them on there either. So yeah, no, you're right. Uh, Titans at the Raiders. Titans are rolling right now. Yeah, and I think we're seeing the Raiders team that we thought we were going to have at the beginning of the season. Just it just it took. My my question is this: Were the Raiders really that good, and they run out of gas? Or were the other teams just take a little while to figure out who they are? Because, like, the Broncos, for instance. Like, yeah. the Raiders opening week beat the hell out of the Broncos. I mean, it took 10 weeks, 14 weeks, but the Broncos have kind of found an identity. I, t- I think it took them getting out. Drew Locke healthy. Well, yeah, they didn't have it. But he that helps start that. at the season anyway. They just The Raiders have fallen off, man. They got destroyed by, the, by the Chiefs. You want to talk about hit a cliff. It, which it's one thing to get blown out by the Chiefs. Like, Correct. Uh, you go to Arrowhead, no that kind of stuff that. happens. But the week before you get beat thirty-four to three by the Jets, that's a problem. Like that's that's a major league problem. And then the Jets turn around and get beat at Cincinnati. Like get housed at Cincinnati. So yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with the Raiders, the Titans though. What is it? They won like five out of six. Yeah, they won five out of six. And, and the question is, is what happens if they start the season with Tannehill instead of which? There's no way you could have brought Tannehill in. Thought he was better than Marcus, and Marcus really hadn't done anything to that point to justify losing his job. Yeah, I mean, but it just it, it's one of those what ifs. They well, I mean, be, this they could realistically be winning this division. I mean, they're they're sitting at seven and five, yep. and they've got a shot to win the AFC South here. That's right. I mean, it's just crazy. They they, they got a shot to make a wild card play. They could no matter what. They could realistically. Um, I'm, what are we looking at? What are we I'm looking wanting at? to pull up the, the Titans schedule because I was, I, I was thinking the same. We were, we were, I think they could win 10 ball games. Both thinking the same thing here. Let's see. They got the Raiders, they got the Texans, they got the Saints, and then they got the Texans again. Um, so if they beat the Raiders, you win two out of three, you're sitting at 10 and six. That's ridiculous. Now they have gone nine and seven the last two years. But I think or last the, three years. I think in so. the AFC, one of those AFC spots is going to be a nine win team. Yeah, I think so. So I mean, we'll see. They, they I don't get think the Texans twice. Win the division, but I, oh, they still have the Texans twice. Yeah, I got, know. I know that the back end of all these uh, schedules are divisional games. Yeah. Now they they do host the Saints in. It's gonna be tough. Let's see, week that'll, fifteen. That'll be brutal. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. But they but they do host them, and they they always get. I mean, they got the Chiefs earlier, and they they handle the Chiefs. Oh, it's not. It's brutal. It's not unbeatable. It's just no. gonna be. It's just gonna be hard. It's. I mean, that's what the. After this week, next week you host the Texans and then you host the Saints and then you play at the Texans. That's kind of a rough way to end the season, but. But man, you sweep the Texans that you take the division. Yeah. Because I don't think the Texans will be three games up on them. No, I mean, what, what are the Texans right now? One game up on them. Maybe two. Let's see. I have no idea. Standings. There we go. Hold on. Let me find standings. Texans are eight and four. Titans are seven and five. Yeah, they're one game up. Just saying. With two to play each other. Really thought that the Texans would. Uh... And you and I, Texans have won the last two weeks. The and Texans have one the of Broncos. Sold on them. Yeah, the Texans have the Broncos at home this week. They go to Tennessee next week. They go to Tampa the week after that, and then they host the Titans. I'm, there is a world where they lose all four of these. It's that's very a, possible. That's a crazy world, but but it is a world. It's there. It's not improbable. This is crazy. I really need that Broncos win this week to get me just a push. <laughs> just push this ticket one time for me, boys. Uh, Monday night football. I threw it on here. 
because it is a divisional game. Giants at the Eagles, and boy, this is just. I didn't even know what this game was when you said Monday Night Football, and then I remembered why. I was like, I'm not going to watch Monday Night Football. The Giants are two and ten. The Eagles are five and seven. Uh, Eagles are the worst five and seven team I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, they're pretty bad, but I don't think they're as bad as the Giants. So I asked a trivia question, a trivia question, a poll question on Twitter. Had five people answer. I don't have a very big Twitter following. I don't know if you guys know that or not. <laughs> not a lot of people follow me on Twitter. Ed Chris B. Genie, if you want to. <laughs> Throw I, it out there. I like a lot of Alabama making fun of stuff and, and LSU things. Um, Would you rather have the Eagles roster as currently constructed and Carson Wentz, or would you rather have Nick Foles and two, not two first-round draft picks, two Extra first round draft picks because you're going to have yours. You're not giving yours up. Yeah. And Nick Foles. Everybody, all all five of you, said you'd rather have Foles in the two picks. I agree with that. Yeah. Now, now Foles obviously is not looking good with Jackson. No, but but you've got three first round picks. But I also think that Foles like worked really well with Doug Peterson. I think the coach matters sometimes. Here's the problem with that. I think we're seeing that Foles didn't work well with Doug Peterson. And I'm biased because I have bought into this Colts team. I think Frank Wright was the genius behind that offense. Well, But even after Wright left, Foles did really well with them last year. He did okay with them, but he didn't do great with them. And that offense went big time backwards last year compared to what they did before. I think Frank Wright was the architect of that offense. We all thought it was Peterson. I think Frank had a whole lot more to do that than we gave credit for. Yeah, you're probably right. Because the Colts eight and the Eagles, and one of them's got a hundred and thirty million dollar contract. Thinking about that, and the other guy's got a thirty million dollar quarterback. Would the Jags maybe make a deal with the Colts? No, the Colts won't make that deal. You don't think so? No. You don't think they would drop Jacoby and, and bring in Nick Foles? No. What I if you traded would, Jacoby? For I think Foles? they would rather have Jacoby than Foles. I mean, you you don't think a reunion of Nick Foles and no, no. okay, no. Just I think curious. that was I think that was magic, and it is magic that will not be duplicated. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. No, I mean that was it. we watched it over like a what a four game five game sample size. Correct is what it is. All right, that's going to wrap it up. That was the NFL Big Game Previews for week number 14. Of course, we will be here the rest of the football season. We are getting into playoff mode. We are getting ready. Go check us out, winningcureseverything.com. You can find everything about us over there, all of our social media platforms, videos, picks, podcasts, previews, everything else. The Football Picks Contest is over there as well. Make sure you get in there. Uh, Smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN to get 20% off your order. Anything over 40 bucks is going to ship for free. SmackApparel.com, promo code WIN, W-I-N. And the show is always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports uh, sports gambling destination. Good gracious, I can't talk. Sports gambling destination. Tunica's got all sorts of wonderful stuff going on. they got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at TunicaTravel.com. Anything else we need to hit? It's been a good week, y'all. Hopefully everybody is uh, profitable this weekend. Enjoy the games. Make sure you watch the 49ers and the Saints. Ah, We'll see you all again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.